judgment in the appeal Woolway and Mazars. Lord Sumption will explain the decision of the court. Uh, rates are uh, an ancient tax which was once levied on almost all property in the United Kingdom, but today affects only properties in business occupation. The core concept underlying the assessment of rates is that they are a tax on property and not on persons or businesses. They are assessed on the rental value of hereditaments, an arcane legal term which means a unit of property. The rental value of a property may depend on its size and its physical arrangement. It is therefore important to decide what land can be included in a hereditament. The present is a case in point. It concerns Tower Bridge House, an eight-storey office block in the London borough of Tower Hamlets. The first, third, fourth and fifth storeys are occupied by a firm of solicitors. Mazars, a firm of accountants, occupies the second and sixth storeys. The usual practice of valuation officers is to treat different spaces as forming part of a single hereditament if they are adjacent to each other, whether horizontally or vertically. But if the same occupier uses spaces that are separated by intervening stories, they are treated as separate hereditaments. Thus, the three adjacent stories occupied by the solicitors were treated as one hereditament. Uh, whereas the two stories occupied by Mazars, which were separated uh, by three intervening stories occupied by the solicitors, were treated as two hereditaments. Mazars challenged this treatment in the Valuation Tribunal. They said that the two spaces which they occupied in the same building should be treated as one hereditament, whether they were adjacent or not, because they were used for the same purpose, namely running their business. Both the Valuation and tr Tribunal and the Lands Chamber of the Upper Tribunal agreed. But in the unanimous opinion of the Supreme Court, the Valuation Officer was right to treat them as two separate hereditaments. Its reasons are set out in a judgment which I have prepared and with which the rest of the panel agrees and which seeks to give some general guidance about the approach to be taken by valuers. Lord Newberger and Lord Gill deliver concurring judgments. The reason for treating to the two stories occupied by Mazars as constituting two hereditaments is that the test is primarily geographic. In other words, uh, there has to be a continuous space under common occupation. You have to be able to draw a ring round it on a map or a vertical plan. To this, there are a number of exceptions that reflect the nature of the tax. First, a continuous space may be broken up into two or more hereditaments, um, if geographically distinct parts of it are occupied for quite different purposes. Secondly, a space may be geographically continuous, but physically broken up into two or more units which do not directly intercommunicate. For example, there may be no way of getting from one adjacent story to the next, except by passing through the common parts of the building, such as the, the lift lobby on each floor uh, of this building that would be a powerful indication that the two spaces were separate. By comparison, geographically separate spaces, such as offices on opposite sides of the street, will only very rarely be treated as a single hereditament, even if they are under common occupation for a similar purpose. Uh, it is usually only possible to treat them as a single hereditament where one space cannot effectually be occupied or let without the benefit of the other. The only unifying features a feature of the two spaces with which we are presently concerned is that they are both occupied by Mazars for much the same purpose. But in a tax uh, which is assessed on properties rather than businesses, that cannot be relevant. This ruling brings English law into line with the law as it has been understood for very many years in Scotland. The appeal will accordingly be allowed. Thank you.